Hi, everybody. Today, this is a science story sort of lesson about Komodo dragons. So some of you might remember that a couple weeks ago in our gathering to share at two o'clock, Abby shared that she had just read about a female Komodo dragon who gave birth to some baby Komodo dragons without ever mating with a male. So the female Komodo dragon reproduced asexually all on its own and the babies were just from her, no males involved. And we had never heard about that. So that was really interesting. And we thought, and I said, wow, those babies were clones of the mom. But then I went and did some research and I found out more things. So this is the story of parthenogenesis in Komodo dragons. Parthenogenesis is a word that means having babies reproduced asexually. So when a female can create babies on her own without a male. And that word, I'm going to write it in case you want to look it up. Parthno, it's a very long word. Genesis. Parthenogenesis looks like this. Okay. Now, parthenogenesis is this cool thing that some reptiles can do. Now, we'll talk about asexual reproduction in plants some other time, but for now, I just want to talk to you about animals. This is a rare, rare, rare thing. If we took all the vertebrates, all the creatures with a backbone like we have, and grouped them all together, only one out of every 1,000 of them would be able to do parthenogenesis. One out of every 1,000. That's a tenth of a percent. And it is way more common for parthenogenesis to be possible in reptiles than it is in some of the other types of vertebrates. Remember that vertebrates is fish, reptiles, amphibians, birds, and mammals. Reptiles do this most frequently. Now, the way that this works is when a female vertebrate's body is getting made, like when it's you know growing as it's developing as a teeny tiny baby, it's going to make all of these eggs that later could turn into babies someday. So if you are a female, you have those eggs hanging out in your body already right now. You might never use them, but they're in there. They're just stored. And it works the same way for a female reptile, like a Komodo dragon. So the way that the female's body makes those eggs is, and this is the not super sciencey version. This is the simple version because the super sciencey version probably is something you need to get a little more background knowledge for first. The simple version is that the female's body takes some cells and it takes half the information from the cells that it has and it puts those into the egg and it stores a little egg with half the female body's information in it, half the DNA. And then it makes another egg with another half. It might be a different half. Just like if I draw this circle, I could make my half mark be here and only use that half or I could make it Wow, this is hard for me. Here and only use that half, or I could do it here and only use that half. It works like that when these eggs are being made. So you end up with tons and tons of eggs saved up for this creature's life that are just tiny and hanging out inside its body. And they have each one a different half of the DNA of that creature in it. So a female Komodo dragon who's walking around has all these little eggs with different halves of her DNA in them. Now it's designed that way so that when an animal mates and they get the other half of the DNA from the male, then two halves go together, they make a whole, and you have all the information that it takes to grow a new creature, how to make more of itself. That's how sexual reproduction works. That's how most animals are born. That's how you were born. However, if a creature can do parthenogenesis, like the Komodo dragon does, it has an option of making a baby all on its own without needing its half plus a half from a male to squish together. And what happens is that little egg gets doubled. So the egg that the female has with its half of its information gets multiplied by two. One half times two, well, half and half squished together gives you a whole. But what's crazy is that the whole is made of twice of somebody's half. So bear with me for a second. Let's look at this little circle and I'm gonna draw some doodles in it and we'll see if this helps the idea make sense. So we're just gonna use blue and green dots to show information. So let's say that this is the hole 
of all the information that the female Komodo dragon has in its cells. Okay, let's say that that's what it has. Now we're going to draw the half line that shows what one imaginary egg got as its half of the information. So let's say that the imaginary Komodo dragon baby we're talking about is going to be made with the egg created from this half of the information. Notice how that has only blue dots in it? If we multiply that section times two, we take it and we double it, we're going to get a big circle with only blue dots, right? The green dots aren't going to happen because they weren't in the original half. So you would end up with this information, and that is the egg that the baby would be created from using parthenogenesis. This means that some things from the mother will be passed down and some things won't. And nothing will be passed down from the male because there's no father, no male involved in this situation because of parthenogenesis, because the female is reproducing asexually. So this means that the babies are not clones. All of the information they have came from their mother. They don't have any information from anywhere else, but they don't have all the information their mother has because just like this, if they were created using a doubled half, they missed out on all the information that was over here in the half that they weren't made from. If that feels a little confusing, no worries. Just hang out with the idea. The big thing to know here is that Komodo dragons can have babies all on their own with no male involved. Now, this Komodo dragon that Abby brought us the article about, she had, her name was Charlie, she had three baby Komodo dragons and they were all males. Now, the first thing that the, I think it was zoologists who were studying her had to wonder about was, well, maybe she mated with a male and reproduced normally, sexually, and we just don't know about it because reptiles can do this other crazy thing where they can mate and then store that information, store the sperm for years before they use it to grow a baby. So first they thought maybe Charlie the Komodo dragon like mated with a male a couple years ago and has just been waiting to grow the babies until now. So they had to take the three little babies and give them a DNA test, which means they took a little bit of their cells and they looked at the information in them, the information like we were drawing in the pictures. And they found that all the information in the babies came from their mother. There was no information from anywhere else which proves that they were made with parthenogenesis, that no male was involved. Once they knew that, then they got into thinking about some other cool stuff. All three of those babies were male. Anytime a Komodo dragon reproduces with parthenogenesis, all of its babies will be male. So here's some genetics for you. In humans, the part that determines the part of your DNA, of the information in your body, that determines whether you end up as a male or a female is these things called X and Y chromosomes. And if you have two of the X ones, you end up with a female body. And if you have an X and a Y, you end up with a male body. And sometimes extra things can get complicated where you might have three or other stuff, but that's a story for another day. In reptiles, it's set up a little differently. Instead of having two X's equals female and X plus Y equals male, they have W's and Z's. So in a Komodo dragon, if you get two W's, the baby will just never exist. It won't grow because it's impossible. If you have a W and a Z, so one of each, then it grows a female, a female Komodo dragon. And if you have two Z's, it grows a male Komodo dragon, like this. This is what I just said. If you have a W and a Z, you get nothing. Or pardon, if you have two Ws, you get nothing. The baby can't grow, it won't exist. If you have a W and a Z, you'll get a female Komodo dragon. And if you have two Z chromosomes, you'll get a male Komodo dragon. So check this out. The female Komodo dragon only has Ws and Zs inside of her, but when you do the half and half thing that is normally supposed to happen in sexual reproduction, the male is supposed to give a Z to it and the female gives either a W or a Z. And so if the male gives a Z and the female gives a W, then you get a female. If the male gives a Z and the female gives a Z, then you get a male. But 
Remember that with parthenogenesis, everything comes from the female, which means that either the female gives a, d a W and it gets multiplied by two. So W plus another W would equal two Ws. It can't create anything. If the female has a Z in the half that gets copied, then you get two Zs, Z times plus Z is two Zs, and you get a male. There is no way for the Komodo dragon to make female babies without reproducing sexually, without involving a male in the process. So all of these babies produced with parthenogenesis have to be male. They can never ever be female unless something really weird and mutation-y happens. Isn't that neat? So Charlie the Komodo dragon can produce offspring on her own without a male, but all her babies will be males. Now, last thought here is what in the world is going on with this? Like, why did this happen? Why did Komodo dragons get the ability through evolution to reproduce with parthenogenesis? Like, what's going on there? In general, babies made with sexual reproduction, where they get half their information from each parent, are going to be stronger because there's more variety in there, more diversity in their genetics. But not always. And this is what scientists think right now. So Komodo dragons live on these little islands. There's an area of the world down between like the bottom corner of Asia as you're moving towards Australia, down where the Philippines are. Go look at a map if you can. But it's lots of teeny tiny islands there. Some of the islands are so small that they don't even mark them on maps. It's just a big mess of little islands everywhere. Now, Komodo dragons living on these islands, scientists imagine that every once in a while, there's a storm and a Komodo dragon gets swept away, like it's sitting on a log and the log gets swept out or it even just gets swept into the ocean by the storm and it ends up on a new island. If a Komodo dragon ends up on a new island all alone, that's gonna be the end, right? It can't reproduce, it can't have babies, it will finish its life and there will be no new Komodo dragons on that island. If a male and a female both washed to the same island, they could totally reproduce and start a new population. But that's kind of unlikely to happen. Like, it's rare enough that a storm would sweep up a Komodo dragon and wash it to a new island. It's a little too rare to hope that it would wash a female and a male at the same time. So what's dandy, what's really nice, is if a female gets washed to a new island and can reproduce without a male, then that female can have a bunch of male babies and then can make a new group of Komodo dragons on that island because then it would have males to, you know, mate with sexually instead. That's what scientists think is going on right there. And that's why Komodo dragons have this ability to do parthenogenesis, to reproduce asexually. I hope you enjoyed that science rant, random science conversation, because it is super cool. If you're into this genetic stuff and are thinking, wait, Katie only told me just a little, I want more. Let me know. I can help you find some good books to read or some interesting articles because normally this genetic stuff isn't really an elementary school thing, but I know that your brain can handle it. So if you want to know more, reach out and let me know and we will talk about it some more. For following up, anything you like. Learn a little bit about Komodo dragons. Maybe find out what other animals have the ability to do parthenogenesis. I don't think there are any mammals who do, but I haven't looked. Maybe you want to look. Do some investigating. Maybe look on a map and find the names of some of the little countries down where Komodo dragons live. Maybe find out what Komodo dragons eat and just do a little animal report. Anything that feels good to you. And remember that if you're not feeling amazingly into this idea, it's okay to follow up by just writing, you know, I learned these three things and calling it good with that. Have a wonderful day. I miss you all. And I'm glad we got to chat random science today. See you soon. Bye.